What's happening Hardscapers? Today we're going to talk about how deep you need to dig for your segmental retaining wall installation. Let's get into this. In a previous video where we talked about how deep you need to excavate for a paver project, we talked about subsoils, sandy to clay, silty, whatever it might be, and the difference in depth that you need to dig for your patio project. We also talked about how climate can also affect that as well. Northern climates where we experience freeze-thaw cycles regularly throughout the winter require a deeper excavation, more base depth for those projects, whereas southern climates, they require a little bit less and then we also talked about the traffic in a paver project such as a patio walkway where it's pedestrian traffic you do not need as much of a base depth than you would for a driveway project for a driveway project we're somewhere around 12 to 14 inches in a northern climate whereas a paver patio project where it's pedestrian traffic not vehicular we're looking around six to eight inches. Now for a segmental retaining wall project, those variables are not gonna affect this too much. The one thing that we may wanna consider are our subsoils. If we have a well draining subsoil such as sand, we can probably stick to a minimum on this range that I'm gonna give you. Whereas a clay subsoil where it's very dense and it does not drain well, it's weak subsoil, you're probably gonna wanna dig a little bit more to give yourself a little bit more of a base. But when it comes to a base for our segmental retaining wall, for me personally, we're around six to eight inches in depth. And that's not how much you need to dig, that's just for the base material itself. Now you need to consider the retaining wall block as well as if you are going to screed a layer on top of your base to level your blocks. If you're not going to screed a layer to level your blocks on top of your base material, you don't need to consider that. But if you are, I would consider a one inch addition to your six to eight inches. And then you need a minimum of six inches embedment for your retaining wall. Now this is a variable that's gonna be affected by many things, including the slope after the wall, leading up to the wall, and any additional surcharge or force that is being placed on that wall in behind it is going to affect how much embedment you're going to need, but a six inch minimum is the recommended. And with all that being said, we've got six inches for embedment, we've got the one inch screed layer as an optional, and then we've got six to eight inches for our base material. That gives us a range anywhere from 12 inches to 15 inches. And that's how deep you're going to need to dig for your retaining wall project. So let's show you what we're doing here. We're going to put our U-level on the actual coping units because that is top of grade. So we will zero that out. And then at the bottom, bottom of our trench, we should be at least 14 inches. pretty good there. We'll have about a nine inch base with that. However, another thing that you need to consider are any step ups or step downs in your project. You always need to consider that range 12 to 15 inches, but you need to keep that fairly consistent. But when it comes to a step up or step down, you're gonna be actually adding a little bit more in your excavation and you need to plan for these step ups or step downs in your base material when you're actually excavating for your project. These step ups and step downs really depend on on whether or not your retaining wall is following a slope. If it's following a slope, eventually you'll hit a point where your initial course will no longer be embedded six inches as a minimum. And in those cases, you're actually gonna need to dig down an additional amount, depending on the height of your retaining wall product, to be able to step down or step up, whatever that looks like in your project. In your planned step up and step downs, you're actually gonna be digging a little bit deeper at the height of your retaining wall block or whatever it works out so that you can be able to step up and step down and that is something that's going to be crucial to your planning as well as to your excavation so make sure you measure your slope along your retaining wall with that final grade and figuring out whether you're gonna dig a little bit deeper at the starting point and have a nine inch embedment. And then if it's sloping down at the very end of your wall, have a six inch minimum embedment there. Or you can start from the beginning, have a six inch embedment, and because of that slope, plan for a step down somewhere in that excavation at the midway point or wherever that six inch embedment that you need begins to reveal itself and get to about five inches. Step ups and step downs are a bit of a pain if at all possible it's best to build from the bottom 
up because step ups are much easier. In this case, we're doing a step down. So essentially, I just wanna make sure that this top of this wall matches up with the bottom of this wall. Because essentially, another wall piece is gonna go on top of this, bridge this gap, fill in this, and I'll pound that down a little bit with gravel and then that next piece is gonna come about to the midway point of this one. That's my step down, did another one up there. Essentially what we're doing with step downs and step ups is we get to a point where we wanna get at least about six inches buried course of a wall and we're getting really close here to about four inches. So we wanna step down to be able to maintain that six inches of buried course. So that's why we're doing a step down. This will be built up slightly to get us to six inches and to clean up everything that we've been messing around with and packing down as we walk on this. But that is why we do a step down. Okay, besides the excavation depth, we also need to consider the excavation width because a retaining wall requires a six inch toe of base material in front of the wall the depth of the wall block, and then the 12 inches minimum behind the wall block. So you need to add up that minimum six inches in front of the wall, the depth of your wall block, plus that 12 inches in behind. This is usually a minimum of 28 inches. You'll be preparing your base material throughout this entire trench. In front of the wall block, it'll be your final grade, whatever that is, whether that's pavers, or whether that is some topsoil with some seed. But in behind the wall block, that's your drainage area. So that's gonna dictate where your drainage pipe is gonna go, as well as filling in with a three quarter inch angular crushed clear stone and compacting that as you build up your retaining wall. That that's your drainage area in behind the wall. So we've covered the depth of your excavation for your segmental retaining wall, that being at 12 to 15 inches. And we've covered the width of your segmental retaining wall, that being the minimum six inches before the wall, the depth of the wall block, and the 12 inches afterwards. We'll just go with 28 inches for that width. And then the length of your retaining wall is dictated by the project itself. So with all of that, you've got the dimensions of your excavation and everything that you need to go off of to be able to excavate for your retaining wall. But if you need some extra help, you can leave a comment in the comment section below. I'll respond to anybody and everybody. And if you're a DIYer, we have courses available for you. The link is in the description below. And if you are a business owner that wants to get into hardscape or is already in hardscape and wants to train and onboard their employees with some resources, we have courses available on our members only platform. And that includes a subscription to our How to Hardscape headquarters software, which will help you budget, estimate, and streamline processes in your business. Link is in the description below there for that. Like this video if you found it helpful for whatever reason and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more hardscaping content like this. Thank you so much for watching.